it to parents. It is super tough when your kids are young and they just won't listen. That's why Nanny Rabina is here to help us out. get to just a few tips um, and then we're going to talk about two specific situations. We've got two moms here with us. How do you get kids to listen? You've got some points. Absolutely. Well, first of all, we have to acknowledge that some children do have what is known as selective hearing. Right. Okay. We've all, we've all, right? I've actually done tests with this in the playground, calling a child and then they don't want, and then I'll holler, do you want an ice cream? And suddenly they're all, oh, they heard that. Yeah. So we know that okay. that does happen. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that the child is looking at you. Yes. Because that is absolutely necessary. If they're already involved in doing something, they may truly not hear you okay I've said it a thousand times Eye children contact. hear with their eyes if they're not looking at you nine times out of ten they don't hear you if you 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 know what you're asking them to do something and you find it's becoming a little bit too much that you are asking them a lot ask them to repeat it back now they have no excuse okay. so if you said go upstairs and brush your teeth you now say what did mommy say mommy said I got to brush my teeth yes okay next you want to keep the sentence short yeah they're little people they need little lines I right. mean at the end of the day if your sentence is this long, I can tell you now they've tuned you out by word four because you're starting to sound like that, you know. Right. And, and for a child of that age, they've lost you around about the third word. So yes. you want, you know, if, if they're coming to breakfast, it's not all about I need you to come to the table now and sit down. Forget all that. It's breakfast, okay, at the table, breakfast is ready. Get the point out at the beginning yes. of the sentence. It's so, yeah, or it's like, Sydney, eat. Yes, yes, right, exactly. Like, just real, keep it real, real crisp. Real short, yes. Eat, eat breakfast now. Yeah. And, and even, also, you know what? Keep sentences short as well for your spouses. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> just keep it short. Okay, so we have um, a couple of moms here. Uh, they bo they're both named Sarah, and they both have four-year-olds. So, Sarah, your son is Spencer. Yes. What, what do you find is the issue in the morning? Trying to get him to eat his breakfast on time. Yeah. Usually it takes him about an hour to an hour and a half to eat his breakfast in the morning. Yeah, ain't nobody got time for no, that. No, he starts school in September, so I'm a little worried about that because yeah. he's not um, eating when he should be, and it's taking a very long time. Okay, so you got to get out the door. He needs to get to school. you got to get to work. Um, can you come over here for a second, Spencer? I know it's so fun playing with blocks, but look, we have breakfast for you. Come and sit right here in this chair. <laughs> Everything's going to go perfectly because he's on national television. Yes. <laughs> um, if, now, if he was at home, Yes. I take it you'd have called him 30, 40 times maybe. <laughs> okay. Okay. So he came to the table. Now yeah. in order to get him into his food, can we do anything better here, Nanny? Yeah, well, first of all, what we want to, what we, well, in terms of the food and eating, mm -hmm. I think what you need to do is give him a little, a little pre-talk first. Okay, we have, you know, you can say we have 30 minutes before we are, we're, we're down from the table, for example. <gasps> Yes, I need you to eat faster. And somehow, as you're going through, because some children, see, he's not slow at all right now. He's got a mouthful of Cheerios going Perfect. on. But some ch children, by nature, mm -hmm. are very slow eaters, mm -hmm. okay? But there are things that you can do to speed him up. And I have to tell you, one of the things is to give him a time, and then that's it. Breakfast is away. Breakfast, you're limited with how much time you can use to practice these things, right? You yeah. probably do better practicing at dinner time to eat faster and hope it rolls over in the morning. Okay. But in the morning, it's like, this is how much time you have. The egg timer can go up. Okay, we've got to get our shoes on, jacket on. You didn't eat your breakfast and have a snack to go. Have a snack in the okay. car because I know you don't want the kids going to school hungry. But at dinner time, that can be the time that you practice. And I actually, a friend told me a story last night. I'm like, hmm, I wonder how this would go down. Yeah. She tells her children, whatever is not eaten here at yes. breakfast, she'd give them the talk about waste of food. Yeah. You get you, a dinner, you get for breakfast. Yeah. And she puts it. Warms it up in the microwave, yeah. next day they are eating it for breakfast. And she yep. has found from the five and the seven year old, the seven year old is definitely eating much faster. She's comprehended, mm -hmm. she doesn't want that for breakfast. Mm -hmm. She does not want to have dinner for breakfast. So you don't want the she meatloaf is for eating breakfast. faster. Yeah. And she talks about the fact that this is a waste of food. We don't mm -hmm. want to throw this food away. And yeah. this is the time. I you like know, that. Limited so the time. Two tips here. Give him less breakfast and take the rest to go. Yes. Um, secondly, whatever you didn't eat, that's your next meal, honey. Yes. There you go. He's <laughs> off. Look at that. He's that's your next meal. Okay. Let's move down. So, Sarah, you've got Lincoln here, and your issue is really uh, bedtime and when it comes to story time. What's happening? Right. Settling down for story time and being able to pick a book and sit and listen to it. 
So he can't pick a book that he wants to read, and then he doesn't necessarily want to settle down uh, with the book. So, I mean, I can think of a, of a couple of things, but what would you say is a good uh, piece of advice? Okay, the first bedtime? thing is when you give a child too many choices, it's like telling me to go down the cereal aisle and pick a cereal. It's too much. I, it's too much. I've never yet gone down and actually picked one because there's too much choice. And I have a problem making choices in a restaurant with a menu sometimes. Oh, me say, too. Okay, what am I going to eat today? Yeah. So in terms of the books, maybe what you have to do is say, Lincoln, Lincoln, hey, come over here, buddy. Okay, these are the books that we're going to have for, for bedtime. Which book are you going to choose for story time? There. So that <laughs> makes... There you go, there you go. <laughs> You see, that's what they pay me Two. for. I, it's so easily fixed. Yeah. Now, so giving him a smaller choice because that can be overwhelming. If he do, if he really has a problem uh, making that choice, then you know what? Again, use a timer. It's like okay, mom's gonna count to ten, and then mommy chooses the book. Right. You know, deal with the screams and the fussing. At the end of the day, if he's upset, the next day he'll try a little harder. The next day, you can actually say we have less time for story time right now. I can only read half the story don't want to take away reading and the book we want to encourage him to actually read the book right, right. but if he's spending a lot of time choosing it he's got to get less time reading and then eventually he'll come back and he'll realize only half a story i'm yes. going to choose it faster today solid tips rabina thank